Hello. For today, I'm going to be making a 16th century Tudor apron. But before we get started, make sure to click subscribe to be updated when new videos come out. And before I get started on making the apron, first I wanted to show you some examples and paintings of aprons to give you an idea of what today's apron will look like. So for my first example, on the left-hand side of the page is a painting from about 1510. And in this example, you will see two women working out in the field and they are wearing aprons. They also happen to have their skirts um, pulled up into their belts. So you can see ankle, you can see feet, legs. But if you look, their aprons cover pretty much the whole front side and also taper down on the sides, which I'll get into that more in a minute. But if you look at the length of the aprons, they go down to just below the knees. Here are some more examples of aprons. On the left-hand side is from the painting of the Field of the Cloth of Gold from about 1520. And you can see that this woman, unlike the ladies on the last page wearing white aprons, this lady is wearing a black apron. This apron is also a little more narrow compared to the aprons on the last page where they covered the whole front side. This apron covers most of the front of the skirt, but not the entire skirt, and it's also longer. On the right side of the page is a painting called Market Woman with Vegetable Stall, and it was painted in 1567. In this one, you can only see the top part of her apron right about the waist, but you can see it is also a wide apron, so it covers the whole front of her the front part of her outfit, but then also tapers around on the sides a bit before going down. And more historic examples of aprons. On the left-hand side is a white apron and a painting from about 1515. We can tell that the apron covers most of her front side and goes down most of the length of her leg. It ends somewhere between the knee and the ankle. In the middle is another example of an apron. It is also white and again, looks like a rectangle tied around the waist. And because she's sitting, we can't tell exactly how long the apron is, but you can tell that it is below the knee and above the ankle. On the right hand side is another painting. And in this painting, you can see two aprons, one in the far right, upper right corner, where it looks like she's churning butter and it's a a white apron tied around the waist, looks like a rectangle. And that one actually looks like it's gathered around the waist and it's very long, like just above the ankle. And then at the bottom left corner of the painting, there is a lady who is milking a cow. And this also looks like it's a rectangle, but hers looks more flat. But since we only see the side of her, it may be gathered in the front and we just don't see that. And because of how she's crouching, we cannot quite tell how long that apron is. My guess is below the knee and above the ankle. And more historic examples of aprons. On the left-hand side is a painting called A Family Saying Grace Before Meal. It's from about 1585. And this apron, it is a rectangle attached at the waist and goes down most of the length of her leg. It looks like it's just above the ankle, slightly a little bit higher up than the ankle, but definitely below the knee. This apron I find to be interesting because it looks like there are little, I don't know if those are crease marks or actual seams of rectangles sewn on the apron. Either way, if these are crease marks or seams, I find it interesting that it has that rectangular pattern throughout the apron. On the right hand side of the page, is the painting known as the Festival at Bermondsey. It's from about 1569. And these are two examples of ladies wearing aprons. The one on the left, that apron to me looks like it's a shade of brown. And the apron on the right is white. Both aprons are tied around the waist and are rectangular, go down most of the length of the leg. So definitely below the knee and above the ankle. And more historic examples of aprons. On 
the left hand side is there are examples in that painting where you can see where the aprons look to be like they're gathered they're tied around the waist but then gathered so they are not quite not really wide but they are definitely long the skirt on the far left side that apron goes the full length of the skirt so it's right at the ankle the skirt on the right hand side of that painting the apron is just above the hem of the skirt so these are both very long aprons the painting in the middle shows a black apron or it could be a dark gray apron on the left hand side actually i'd say more dark gray and then on the right hand side of that painting is a white apron with that same pattern that we saw before where it looks like it's either crease marks or seams creating rectangles in that pattern as you can tell both aprons are tied around the waist they look rectangular the gray apron looks like it's gathered a bit rather than pleated at the waist and then both are long below the knee and above the ankle on the right hand side are two white aprons the one on the left hand side looks like it's just flat or tied around the waist but then flat no pleats and not gathered but definitely long somewhere between the knee and the ankle and the one on the right because of how the lady is positioned i can't quite tell if it's gathered or pleated but it's definitely rectangular and also somewhere between the knee and the ankle for the length and more historic examples of aprons on the left hand side is an apron it's white you can see it's tied around the waist it's rectangular goes down and it ends somewhere between the knee and the ankle the picture in the middle that apron it's tied around the waist but it's narrow so it's around the waist looks almost like it's gathered it's probably pleated but it's not really wide but it is long that one I find to be interesting because it almost looks like there's embroidery in the middle of the apron and then further down on the apron. And I haven't seen many other examples of embroidery on aprons. If embroidery was on an apron, then that must have been an apron just for decorative purposes and not really functional. On the right hand side is yet another simple white apron. A rectangle tied around the waist covers up most of the front of the skirt goes down most of the length of the skirt and so ends slightly above the ankle definitely below the knee and more historic examples of aprons on the left hand side is a painting from 1564 and this one it's the back side of the apron so you can tell that she has a rectangle tied around her waist and what they would do with waistbands like this is you would have a long rectangle, but the waistband would only be sewn to most of the edge of the rectangle, but not the ends. So the ends are detached from the waistband. And so they sort of flop down or are free from the waistband, as you can see in this painting. And it looks like her waistband, that it, the ties were long enough that the apron is wrapped around her waist and then the ties are then brought around the front so the ties are crisscrossed around the back brought around the front and the apron is actually tied in the front on the right hand side this is another painting from about 1564 and these are different examples of aprons from the same painting i've had to zoom in on these examples so i'm sorry if the pictures are a little blurry but you still get the basic idea most of them were wearing white aprons on the bottom left corner you you will see a black apron it's probably a dark gray but they all look like they are flat rectangles tied around the waist cover up most of the front of the skirt you can see in the bottom row the middle painting that picture shows that again the rectangle is not fully attached to the waistband the corners are detached from the waistband so you can see that fabric flapping and on the top row on the far right you can see that her apron is so wide that it actually wraps around her body and almost touches in the back all of these aprons look to be long definitely below the knee and somewhere above the ankle so what materials would have been used 
for a 16th century Tudor apron. In my opinion, linen was probably the most popular. It is lightweight, it's easily washable, it's durable. I could see a lot of people using linen. In fact, for the skirt I will be making today, I will be using linen. However, other materials were also used, such as durance, which is a closely woolen weave, russet, which is undyed wool, or silk. And with the silk, that would have been more for the upper class, just having something decorative on their outfit rather than, in my opinion, something useful. Because if you were lower class, I could see finding linen to be more easily accessible, cheaper, and more user-friendly than silk. What colors would have been used? White, obviously, we saw that in many paintings. If you are doing a lower class persona, then I suggest staying away from bright white. Use something like an off-white or an unbleached white. Other colors that were used were olive green, blue, pink, brown, possibly black, or a dark gray, and any other fabric that was, an, or any other dye that was a natural dye color. So for example, using matter to then create your dye for your fabric. What were the uses of making an apron and wearing the apron? Well, if you were lower class, you had many uses for that apron. It protected your clothes. If you were baking, milking a cow, doing something that was manual labor, and if anything splattered, it could splatter on the apron and not on your clothes. So it protected your clothes. Say you got your hands wet, you just milk the cow and you want to wipe any residue off of your hands, you could wipe your hands, you could dry your hands on the apron. It could be used as an oven mitt. If you are working in the kitchen and you have put something into, say you're using a cob oven and you need to pull something out of it, you need to put something in, you could use that apron to then grab the thing that, the pan that you're using to put it in or out of the oven. It could be used as a rag. Say, say your child has spilled a little something on the floor. You could just grab part of your apron and clean up the floor or the table. Actually, I would recommend the table, not the floor. The floor, I would get something else to mop up the floor. Let's say you spilled a little bit of water on the table. You can use the corner of your apron and mop up that mess. Something else that they could have used an apron for would be a gathering basket. Say you go to pick just a couple pieces of fruit and you don't have a basket readily available. Or you're scooping crumbs off of a table to then go throw away elsewhere. You can scoop those crumbs and instead of scooping them into your hand, say there's too much to scoop, you could hold up the apron with one hand and then scrape the crumbs with your other hand into the apron. Or just the same, hold the apron with one hand, pick your fruit, put them in your apron, and then carry it inside to then bake with. So for today's apron, I looked and I couldn't find an actual pattern online or in any other pattern books, and I really didn't want to go out to the store to buy a pattern for what basically looks like a rectangle with strings. So I made up my own pattern here, and so for today's apron, I'm going to be making a rectangle with a waistband. The With my picture here, though, you can't quite tell what I want to do. You could probably do one of two things. You could either have your rectangle with just strings attached for the waistband or have a very long waistband and connect that apron so it right in the middle of that waistband. So that's actually what I'm going to do because I think if you have a rectangle and then just attach ties on either side of the rectangle, that is a lot of pressure that could be put depending on what you're using your apron for, like if you're collecting the fruit. That's a lot of weight going in that apron and if you just have strings held onto the apron by a couple of threads tied around your waist, that's a whole lot of pressure, a lot of stress on those stitches. And I could, 
I could see the strings breaking away from the waistband. So instead, what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be making one very long strip of fabric that's going to be my waistband and then also the ties at the end. And then in the middle of that very long strip of fabric, I will be sewing my rectangle into that. That way, all along the waist at the front where the apron is, I have all of those stitches holding onto the waistband rather than just on either side. If you have questions or want to visit any of the websites that I found my paint pictures at, here is my Works Cited page. And on to making today's apron. First, you want to take your linen and make sure you wash it. And then after that, I'm laying out my fabric and I'm going to cut out my rectangle. For today, I'm going to be cutting out a rectangle that is 26 inches wide and 36 inches long. And if you have fabric chalk, this is where you would use fabric chalk. Otherwise, I like to just use a yardstick or a measuring stick and pens to mark where I want to cut. So I'm going to measure 26 inches. Once you have your rectangle cut out, go ahead and hem all four of your edges. So what you're going to do is you are going to fold over the edge once and then fold it over again. So to show you that up close, you have your edge and you'll roll it over once or fold it and then fold it over again. and pin it in place, just like that. When you get near a corner, what I like to do is, as you can see, this edge here, it's been folded over once, folded over again, like that. And now I'm going to rotate my fabric and do the same on this edge. So fold it over once, fold it over twice, and pin in place just like that. Now for the waistband, I want to be able to tie it in the front so I don't have enough fabric for one strip, so I'm actually going to cut two strips, sew it together, that way I have enough fabric to go around the waist from the front to the back, and then again from the back to the front. So first, I'm going to measure out. I want to have my waistband, it's two inches wide that I'm going to be measuring out and then with that I'm going to be folding the two inches over so the waistband will be one inch but then there will also be the seam allowance inside so it'll actually be maybe three-fourths of an inch. Once it's folded and sewn. So with this, again, you can use fabric chalk, or with me, I'm just using a measuring stick and pins. And now I'm cutting out the first strip that will be part of the waistband. And now I'm measuring out the second half of the waistband, which will also be the strings that tie the apron around the waist. And now, go ahead and take your two ends and pin them together. Okay. 
Now you can choose if you want to use a sewing machine to sew this, or with me, I'm going to be hand stitching this to try to be a little more historically accurate. And now I'm hand stitching the edges of the rectangle, which will be the body of the apron. And as you can see here, I am just going under one or two threads on the main body part. If I flip over here, you can just faintly see the metal right there. And then putting it through the double layers of the hem and then pulling it through. This way with the stitch, the hem is stitched to the apron, but on the front side, you do not see any stitching. So first what I'm going to do is measure the fabric. And this is 25 inches wide. So I'm going to find my halfway point, which would be 12 and a half. And so from here, I'm going to go out and I'm going to mark six inches from each end. So, so six inches. And then on the other side, let me move this over. There we go. And six inches from the left side. So this section in between the two pins will be the part that is sewn into my waistband. And the sections from the pin to the edge will be the part that flaps around. Now with this right here, I want to find my middle point. And that middle section will be the middle section that I measure up with the middle part here. So let me go ahead and flip this around. So to find the middle section, to find the middle section between the two pins, So it's about 13 inches. So halfway would be six and a half. And I will go ahead and mark that. So where this pin is, is where this seam will be. So you want to fold it over, but also you want to tuck your ends inside. So fold that in, fold that in, and then flip it over in half. This way when you sew up your waistband, everything will be on the inside. So you can see I'm measuring up the middle seam here with my pen. I'm folding that over and then pinning everything together. And same thing, I'm going to move down a little bit. I have the waistband folded here and I'm going to tuck it in underneath. Fold this on this side and then pin everything together. So now that's what it looks like on the back side and here's what it looks like on the front side.
And now I'm going to do the same side, or the same thing between this pin and this pin. So this section underneath gets folded under, and then the rectangle lays on top of that, well the hem of the rectangle, and then fold over this piece of fabric, and lay that on top. and pin in place. Now once you have the waistband attached to the apron between these two pins, for the rest of it you will be pinning the ties. So same thing like what you did for the waistband, you're going to fold over one side, fold over the other side, and then pin it together. And again, fold, fold, so this side is folded, that side is folded, and then fold in over in half, and pin. When you get to the end of one of the ties, you want to fold it over right here at the edge before you fold in one half and the other half. And this might get tricky trying to get everything to lay just so. Now that you have this half, that half, and the edge folded in, then like that, and then fold it over. and pin it in place. This way all of your edges are folded in and when you sew it together then your fabric will not unravel. Once you have your straps all pinned then it's time to sew it all together. What I do is right here on the edge I will run my needle under a couple threads on the right side and then a couple threads on the left side. So cut the right side and the left side and then I pull it through. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Post them in the comments below. Remember to click subscribe to be updated when new videos come out. And if you like the video, please select thumbs up. Thanks for watching.